Today we're talking about 2.5 dividing rational numbers. So we're going to be dividing fractions and decimals. We talked yesterday a little bit about a reciprocal. Remember, that just means you're just going to flip your fraction. So what would the reciprocal of 3 fourths be? 4 thirds. 4 thirds. So I want you to go ahead and write this in your notes. It just means 4 over 3. We're going to do a little bit of practice with writing the reciprocal of the number. So Alexis, what would the reciprocal of 3 fifths be? 5 thirds is correct. Sierra, let's go over to problem B. This 2 does not look like a fraction. How would I make it look like a, fra a fraction? Good job. Put a 1 under it. And now what would the reciprocal of 2 over 1 be? 1 half. Very good job, because remember, you're just flipping the numerator with the denominator. Nehemiah, what about 7 tenths? Um, 10, over seven. 10 over 7. Now, this next one looks different than these three. Who can help me out with this one? Charbel, what should I do first? The first thing you should do. Very good. I've got to turn the mixed number into an improper fraction. What would 4 and a half be as an improper fraction? Nine, nine over two. Nine over two. Okay, 9 over 2. Charbel... If I were to take the reciprocal of 9 over 2, what would that be? Uh, that would be 2 over 9. 2 over 9 is correct. So that's how you find the reciprocal. Today, our lesson, we're going to need to know and understand how to find the reciprocal or how to flip the fraction. All right, looking here, you can see some pictures of some chicken. How many of you enjoy Kentucky Fried Chicken? How many of you like Chick-fil-A better than KFC? How many of you like Popeye's better? How many of you have tried the new Popeye sandwich? Oh, a horrible one. Okay, fantastic. Well, listen, I want us to think about KFC in math terms. Repeat after me. Keep, flip, change. Okay, so there's some rules that I'm going to teach you today. The KFC method is used every single time you're dividing fractions. Not when you add or subtract or multiply fractions. Only when you divide fractions. Here's why. You cannot divide fractions. You're just not allowed. It's a rule. You can't do it, okay? Instead, read to me what that second star says. You have to multiply by the reciprocal, or basically what that means, flip the fraction. So let's look at the first one, KFC. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the first one. So this means keep the first one, and then you're going to flip the second one. What will it be instead of three-fourths? Four-thirds. Four thirds. And then you have to change the sign or change the operation. Now, is there anything that I can cross-reduce in this problem? Yes, the two and the four. What do they become, Taylor? One and two. One and two. Now we're just going to multiply across like normal. So take your numerator. Class, what's one times two? Two. 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 And then what is one times three for our denominator? Three. Three. So what is the answer? Two. All right. So the answer to one half divided by three fourths is two thirds. Just remember, you have to use KFC anytime you're dividing fractions. All right, so now we're going to find the quotient. Nikki, go ahead and do the first one for us using the KFC method. Bring down 5 over 9. Okay. And then, uh, uh, change the divide sign to the multiple sign. Okay. Um, flip the 3 over 2 to 3 over 2. And then you can cross, um, cross multiply 3 and 9. Change the 3 to a 1 and the 9 to a 2. Excellent. And the answer is 5 sixths. Oh, 5 sixths. Okay, 5 sixths is correct. Great job. Nikki, I want you to bump it off and get someone to do problem B for us. Cameron. All right, she has bumped it off to Cameron. Let's go ahead and do the KFC method. What do I keep, Cameron? I keep the first one. What do I flip? Flip the second one. So what's it going to become? Okay, negative three-fourths. And then change the operation or change the sign to multiply. Is there anything you can cross-reduce? Yes. Cameron. Yeah. Yes. What can I cross reduce? Six. six and four. What can go into a six that can also go into a four? Two. A two. Cameron, what does the six become? Three. And the four? Two. Excellent. Go ahead and multiply across. Numerators first. Okay, nine tenths. Now, Cameron, is the answer positive or negative? Well, negative. It is negative. How can you tell that it's going to be negative? 
You are correct. There is only one negative in the original problem, and that's an odd number, so our answer has to be negative. Going on to the next one, here's what we have. Two negative signs. Is that an even number or an odd number? Odd. odd. No. What is it? Even. Even. That's an even number. So is my answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. It's going to be positive because two negatives equals a positive quotient or a positive answer. So here's what this means. You're always going to take the first number, which is 8.4, and we are going to divide the second number, which is 3.6. Now here's an interesting fact that you probably know from before. You are never allowed to have a decimal in this divisor or in this number outside of this division sign. So what do I have to do to get rid of that decimal? Take it Let's move it to the right because it cannot just get disappeared. We are going to move it over here to the right. If I move that one to the right, what do I have to do with this one? Right. You also have to move it to the right. So now what we're going to do is go ahead. This is how you show me the work, by showing those little things moving it to the right. We're going to rewrite that now that our decimal point has been moved to the back, and we're going to write 84 divided by 36. When doing division like this, we're going to normally just go ahead and round up this number. What would 36 rounded up be? 40. 40. How many times do you think a 40 can go into our 84? Probably two times. 2 times 6 is 12, and then we've got 7. Let's subtract it. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and keep going. I'm going to put a decimal point in how many zeros? 3. Our class is always going to put three zeros. We might not use them all, or we might need more. What should I do with my decimal point? Bring it up. Okay, now I've got to drop down a zero. Remember, we are kind of pretending or rounding. This is about a 40. Let's count by 40s until we get to 120. 40, 80, 120. So how many? About three. Let's take a guess. Let's put three in. Three times six is 18. Nine plus one is 10. Now let's go ahead and subtract, and we get 12. That is smaller than my 36 here, so let's go ahead and drop down a zero. How many times can 36 go into 120? Three. Three. Once again, 108. When I subtract it, I'm going to get 12. Do you guys see a pattern? Yes. Which number is repeating? Three. Three. So read to me what your final answer is. 2.3 repeating. Now, let's go back to our original problem. Should my answer be positive or negative? It should be positive because 2 is an even number. Let's go ahead and box that in. And the answer is 2.3 repeating. Okay, Hunter's going to try problem D. 2.4 divided by 3.2. Which number goes underneath my division sign? Um, um, the 2.4 the goes under the division sign. And which one goes out of the division sign? 3.2. Okay, <laughs> just remember, the first number always gets tucked underneath the division sign. All right, what do I do next, Hunter? We're not going to divide yet, because remember, we're never allowed to divide when this number on the outside has a decimal point in it. So what do we have to do? Very good. We're going to have to move the decimal point, and then what do I do to this decimal point? Also move it over. So now let's rewrite our problem. What will our new problem say, Hunter? Not 32 divided by 24. Read the number underneath the division sign first. 24 divided by 32. We're going to go ahead and put a decimal point and three zeros. Remember to bring that decimal point up. So Hunter, can a 32 go into a 2? Can it go into a 24? Can it go into a 240? Yes. How many times can a 32 go into a 240? So what he did is it seems like he went ahead and rounded this 30 to being close, or 32 close to being a 30. So he says it can go into it eight times. Eight times two is 16, 24 plus one is 25. Does that work? No. No. Notice this number right here is bigger than my 240, which means the eight was actually too big. So let's go one smaller. What should we try? Seven. A seven. Seven times two is 14, 21 plus one is 22. And that definitely works because it is smaller. 
And then what do you get when you subtract it, Hunter? Not 36. What's 3 minus 2? Okay, yes, 16. That is smaller than our 32, so we're going to go ahead and drop down another 0. Remember, think of the 32 about like a 30. Count with me, guys. 30, 30 60, 60, 90, 120, 150. All right, so let's try a 5. We didn't get quite to 160, but we'll just take a guess. 5 times 2 is 10, 15 plus 1 is 16. Hunter, what does it mean when you end with a zero at the bottom? You're done. You're done. So let's go back to our original problem. Negative and positive. What should my answer be, Hunter? A negative or a positive? You are correct. Negative 0.75. And then go ahead and box that answer in. Great job. Thank you for helping us. Number three says to evaluate the expression when x equals 3 over 5 and y equals 10. Repeat after me. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plug in some numbers. Ayana, instead of a y, what will I plug in? A 10. Bring down your divide. And instead of an x, what will I plug in? Three fifths. Now, I want these to look the same, so how do I make my 10 a fraction? Okay, very good. I'm just going to put that it's over a 1. Now, am I allowed to divide fractions, class? No. No, you're not allowed to divide fractions. So we've learned a new method called the what method? KFC. KFC. So Ayana, help me out. Keep the first, first one. Ayana, what do I do next? Flip the second one and then do what? What do I change? We're going to go ahead and change that sign to multiplication. Ayana, is there anything that I can cross-reduce? There is not. So now all I have to do is just multiply across. What's 10 times 5? 50. 50. What's 1 times 3? Three. Three. Am I finished? No. no. You cannot leave your answer improper. Okay, so we've got to instead. This means 50 divided by 3. It goes into it one time. How many times? Three. Not 18. 16. 6 times 3 is 18. Yeah. And now remember, Six. we're just trying to mix the, make this a mixed number. So what's my answer as a mixed number? 16, 16 and 2 thirds. And that is the same thing as 50 over 3. Great job. Thank you, Ayana, for your help. Problem B, harmony. X divided by 2 fifths. What should I plug in for my X? three-fifths, and I'm going to drop down my divided by sign, and my two-fifths. Now, do I just multiply, or do I divide from left to right? What should I do, Harmony? Okay, we cannot just divide something, so she told us we have to use the KFC method. Keep the, which one? Keep the first one, flip the second one. So, Harmony, what does it become instead of two-fifths? Five over two, and then change the Change it to multiplication. Harmony, is there anything that I can cross-reduce? You are correct. I can turn both of these fives into a one. When you multiply across, what do you get? Three over two. Am I done? No. No. Harmony, what's my answer? You've got to make that into a mixed number instead of an improper fraction. You are correct. That means one and a half. Great job. Any questions for me on that part? <clears throat> for section four, it asks us to find the mean of the data set. Do you guys know what the word mean means? What is it? The average. The average. What do you have to do to find the average of something? Average. You add it all up, and then you divide by the number of numbers you had in your data set. So we're going to go ahead and add all of these numbers up. When you add these numbers up, 4 plus 0 plus 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 19, 21, 26, 28, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So what'd you get, guys? So is 108 my mean? 
No, no that's no. just the numbers all added up. I've got to divide by how many numbers were in my data set. How many was that? Nine. nine. Guys, what's 108 divided by nine? 12. 12. So the correct average or mean is 12. Let me have you guys do problem B on your own. All right, as I added up all those numbers, what did you get when you added it? 30. 30. How many numbers were there? Six. Six. So your mean is? Five. Five is correct. Good job, guys. So for our final problem of the day, we're going to use this kind of the same idea as we just did with finding the mean. This is what it's saying. A restaurant launches a mobile app that allows customers to rate their food on a scale from negative five to five. Mm -hmm. If you rated it as a negative five, do you think you liked it? No. Yeah. No, because it's negative. If you put it as a positive five, do you think they like that? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the highest that you can do it, all right? So far, the customers have given the lasagna scores of 2.25, negative 3.50, negative 4.5, 1.75, negative 1, 3.5, and negative 2.5. Should the restaurant consider changing the recipe? So here's what we have to do. We've got to do some work to figure this out. We've got to add all those numbers together. Now, something that's going to make our life a little bit easier is if we add all the positives together and then we add all of the negatives together. So I want us to underline the positive scores. What's the first positive score we see? Everybody underline it. What's the next positive score? 1.75. Remember, zero is not positive or negative. What's the other positive score? 3.5. Okay, those are all the positives. Let's go on to the negatives. What's the first negative number you see? All right, everyone all together. What's the next negative you see? Negative 4.5. The next one? Negative 1. And the final one? What I want to do is add all these together. So first, what we're going to do is just add the positives. The first positive we have is 2.25. The next one, 1.75. And the final one is 3.5. Should I put any placeholders there? No. Zero. Yes. yes, let's put a zero at the end of 3.5 so it's in the hundreds place just like the other ones. Go ahead and add that up on your own. All right, let's see if you got the same thing as me. Five and five is 10, three, 10, 15, three, four, 7.5, okay? Were those my positives or my negatives, guys? Positives. Positive. so I know I'm gonna have positive 7.5. Now what I have to do is add up all of my negatives. So I had negative 3.5, negative 4.5, negative one. Should that go underneath my four or my five? Yeah, four. Four. Underneath the four. Point zero is what that means. And then also we're going to add the negative 2.5. Okay, same sign. Add the numbers and keep the sign. I want you guys to add your negatives together. All right, as I add these together, I get 15, 4, 8, 9, 11.5. And is that positive or negative? negative? That's negative. Now remember what I'm trying to do is add all of these together. So I'm going to do negative 11.5 plus 7.5. So all I did was I took my negatives and now I'm adding them together with my positives. Let's think of the rules we know. Same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract and take. Do I have a same sign or a different sign here? Different sign, so subtract and take. We're gonna do 11.5 minus 7.5. When you do that, what do you get? Okay, four, so doing that, Take the sign of the larger number. Was the larger negative. number positive or negative? Negative. negative? negative four. Now, I'm not finished yet because I'm trying to find the mean. All that work that we just did there, all we did was add the numbers together. Remember with the mean, now I have to divide by what number? Eight. Eight. How'd you get eight? Uh, that was, uh, there were eight yes. people who put in a score or that rated the lasagna, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to divide it by eight. Should my answer be positive or negative? negative? It's going to be negative because you can see there's a negative right there. And let's reduce four eighths. What do you get? Two. Negative two. You can divide by two, but you can divide by a bigger number. What do you get? What's four eighths reduced? One half. One half. Okay, so if this is their score, okay, because it doesn't ask me what the score is, here's what the question was. 
Should the restaurant consider changing the recipe? Yeah. What do you think, yes or no? Definitely. Yes. Okay, I hear definitely. Why do you think definitely they should change it? Okay. Their score came out negative. That means people don't seem to like it very much. If somebody rated my lasagna as a negative, I think I would be really, really sad. So their score was negative. I would say it is time for this poor restaurant to go ahead and change their recipe. So this is the homework assignment that you're going to have for tomorrow on 2.5. You can see there's only nine problems here.